Have you ever had a game you didn't like at first but grew to love over time? That's the King of Fighters 15 for me. It wasn't that the game was bad, it was just a case of my finding the game difficult to get invested in initially. This is partially down to KOF being a super unfriendly franchise to newcomers. Despite including things like auto combos, part of why this game isn't friendly to newcomers is because of players with legacy skill eating, sleeping, and breathing, the King of Fighters, to the point you're going to get massacred if you run across one. What changed, however, was the release of Team Pass 1, which was included in my version of the game. As soon as I started using B. Jenny, I fell in love with the character and the game started clicking for me. After this, I started playing Gauro, Mark of the Wolves, the game that B. Jenny debuted in which in turn allowed me to improve with the character in both Garo and the King of Fighters. After this point, I started to watch lore videos for the series on YouTube, and it got me more and more interested in the franchise. If you look at the games I tend to enjoy, they're almost always lore-rich games. However, in recent KOF games, the story and the lore have kind of taken a back seat. At least if we look at the Shune saga so far, which consists of two games to date. Please note for review purposes, I'm playing the PlayStation 5 version of the game. With the intro out of the way though, let's get into the core of the game, the gameplay. Fighting games live or die based off of this. One could say that's any game. And while that is true, if it's something akin to a visual novel, the gameplay obviously takes a back seat. The King of Fighters 15 gameplay is so good, it actually wound up being my game of the year, beating out the game I thought was going to get that title, the Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero. That's despite KOF 15 having some of the worst matchmaking I've ever seen, but more on that later. As I said previously, this game stands on its excellent gameplay. The impacts from the punches, kicks, fireballs, and various other projectiles and sometimes weapons have amazing impact. With this game, SNK managed to give you the sensation of really walloping your opponent without sacrificing the speed of the game, something the King of Fighters is known for. Comparing this game to KOF 14, which I've reviewed previously, this game feels a ton faster. So much so, it requires the player to make split-second decisions more frequently. Some are going to love this, and some are going to hate this. And if you know anything about me and my fighting game preferences, you'll know I love snappy and quick fighters. So, how are the modes for this game? Honestly, they aren't that great if you're looking for single-player content. All you get out of that front is versus mode, story mode, and training mode. How many times can I say mode in one segment? Jesus Christ. For the lack of modes, this game loses some marks. For story mode, it's basically like most other games' arcade modes. In this mode, you make your team of three, fight through it, and then get some storybook-style cutscenes if your team at it have a story connection. Compared to past KOF entries, this is rather weak, but it is serviceable, and does a lot better than most fighting games. Training mode is as it sounds. You pick your character, you either do some combo challenges, or practice specific mechanics within the game. Again, it does the job, but it isn't anything special. Versus mode, on the other hand, allows you to play either single matches of 3 versus 3 or 1 versus 1 against your friends or against the PC, or watch two CPUs duke it out. Tournament mode is also offered if you have multiple players and are actually running one. That's a neat little feature. 1 versus 1 mode also features normal and tournament mode. Basically, you go against the PC or a fellow player until one of you gets bored. Thankfully, it's hard to get bored of playing this game because it just feels great. In terms of features, this game doesn't have any game-breaking new mechanics over the King of Fighters 14, but it has added a new mechanic called Shatter Strike, which plays into the game's tagline of Shatter All Expectations. So, what is Shatter Strike? By pressing quarter circle forward with heavy punch and heavy kick, you can perform a Shatter Strike. If the opponent is on the ground, they'll be surrounded by a purplish haze and be stunned for a short while, allowing for follow-up combos. If the character is in the air, they'll experience a wall bounce and again be in a stunned state, again allowing for more combo potential. It's not a game-breaking feature by any means, but it does give all characters more options, and that's always a good thing. Overall, KOF 15 doesn't shatter expectations for the casual fighting game player, but it does if you're comparing it against the King of Fighters 14, which was an oppressive game considering its shoestring budget. Speaking of budget, this gets us to one of the reasons KOF 15 shatters the expectations set by KOF 14. 
The graphics for the King of Fighters 15 won't be winning any awards in graphical prowess, nor is it the dumpster fire from KOF 14. The graphics are colorful and vibrant, and are highly stylized, which I appreciate. While they aren't the best on a technical level, KOF 15's graphics are still some of the prettiest graphics I've seen from an aesthetic point of view. Sadly, SNK aren't able to utilize the most from the PS5 and Xbox Series hardware, but again, the particle effects and the like are all massive steps up from the previous entry, though they don't hold a candle to the beauty that is the King of Fighters 13. Speaking of steps up, this brings us to the online portion of the review. The online portion of the King of Fighters 15 is where SNK clearly spent most of their time. You have your standard ranked and casual match, plus room match. Those are all standardized feature in fighting games at this point in time, and they aren't really worth expanding on. The room match does allow players to choose a wide range of different variations on the 3 vs 3 and 1 vs 1 format, which a lot of fans are going to seriously enjoy. However, one of the less standardized, but by no means innovative features, the King of Fighters 15 features, is online training mode. What is online training mode, you ask? Basically, it's training mode with a friend online. This allows you to learn a new character from someone who may know the character better than you do, and that's an excellent feature that all fighting games should have going forward. But those features aren't where this game clearly had most of its budget spent. This game uses rollback netcode, and very good rollback at that. Rarely do I feel lag with this game, and when I'm playing online with other friends on a recent stream, I played with a friend of mine in Australia, and I live in Canada. If this was a game like KOF 14 that utilized the classic and very outdated delay-based netcode, would have been a very unplayable slideshow. Basically, if you have a group of friends who are interested in playing this game with you, you're going to have a good time. However, if you're expecting the online for ranked and casual matches to be exceptional, Boy, am I here to disappoint you. Ever since the King of Fighters launched on February 17th of last year, players have experienced what can only be described as matchmaking hell. Why is it hell, though? It's because you're going to be sitting for 10 minutes waiting for a match, and that's if you're lucky. Chances are you won't find one at all. The hope is come spring of this year, this issue will be sorted out. Why is the player base expecting this to be fixed by then? because KOF 15 is getting crossplay at some point in the spring. Gamers are simply hoping that SNK implementing this feature will allow matchmaking to become easier considering the King of Fighters is available for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, and PC. Basically a ton of platforms, with the potential for a strong player base. However, the more pessimistic players feel this will be too little, too late because the casual players and the middle-level ones will have moved on to either new and different fighting games or different genres entirely. We'll just have to wait and see on that front. You can't discuss a King of Fighters game without at least touching on the soundtrack and the sound effects used for the various moves. When you're in a fight on top of the punches, kicks, etc. feeling great, they also sound great as well. Your heavy punch and heavy kick will sound far bassier and meatier than your light punches and light kicks. These sound effects do their job, however the soundtrack is where the franchise really comes alive. One could say the same about SNK games in general. They typically have really good hard rock and heavy metal songs mixed in with blues, jazz, and any other genre that fits the character. I often find myself putting on various songs from different KOF games just to enjoy the music. This game knows what fans like and gave them the DJ station, which features songs from older KOF games, remixes of those songs, and songs new for this game. Basically, you'll like this feature if you're into music at all. So that about covers my thoughts on KOF 15. This game, along with Gauro Mark of the Wolves, fostered my love of 2D fighting games. I'm giving this game a solid 9 out of 10. But what are your thoughts on the game? Comment below. Also, if you liked this video, my review for KOF 14 and Garou will be popping up now. Also, if you'd like to fight me in KOF 15, I stream on Twitch, www.twitch.tv forward slash Lever90. Links for that and my socials will be in the description below. And until next time, keep blazing that trail.